Two brewery Anna collectors go head to head for the chance of winning a fabulous mystery prize today on Collector Showdown. Is it happy hour yet? Anyone? I have about 3,000 cans. Somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 bottles. This is not a chugging competition. The room's not spinning yet. How much beer does a growler hold? It's Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Snap top. My goodness. I knew more than I thought. I'm gonna knock the suds right off your mug. I'm gonna kick you in the can. This is my favorite can. Care for a pint? We are here at the Esplanade Beer Market in Toronto, an establishment boasting more than 100 brands of beer from over 24 countries. A nirvana for beer lovers and the perfect place to stage a showdown between two beer collectors. On Collector Showdown, there are two challenges. First, a test of knowledge. Second, a test of skill. If our contestants are tied after the first two rounds, we go to a sudden death showdown. The stakes are high and the winner takes all. The prize will be a dream come true for only one of these two collectors. Will it be Dave, an avid collector of beer cans and other brewery Anna? Or Pete, a vintage beer bottle collector? You're just gonna have to watch and find out. Brianna collecting certainly is popular in throughout North America, the United States and Canada, and Europe. Uh, there are beer can collectors in Brazil and Australia and New Zealand. Brianna refers to all beer packaging, which includes labels, beer cans, bottles, and crowns, and then all types of advertising, whether it's trays, neon signs. Uh, coasters are very collectible, not only in North America, but Europe as well. There's no quote beer lovers like to use. It goes, beauty is in the hand of the beer holder. That may be true for beer drinkers, but for our collectors, that could literally be beauty is just in the beer can or the beer bottle. My name's Dave and I collect anything to do with beer. My name's Pete and I collect beer bottles. Currently, I have about 3,000 cans in my collection. I have approximately somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 bottles in my collection. I prefer bottles that are pre-1900, that's kind of my specialty. Now I've been collecting for 25 years, mostly cans at first, but slowly got into the Buriana portion, which is the advertising and the trays and, and such. This is my very first beer can that I knowingly collected, Paps Brewery, red, white and blue. 20 cent can. I collect paper labeled beer bottles, embossed beer bottles, stubby beer bottles. I collect signs, serving glasses, labels, crowns, which are the tops off bottles. We have several thousand of those. Some beer trays. I have 150 serving trays. Oh, and labels. Any advertising piece that has beer on it. This is my West Wall. Here I have my serving trays, my five liter cans, and my larger cans. I also have my packaging, as well as my Budweiser display, which I'm quite fond of. The art of displaying a can is to display it on the shelf as a full can with the top intact, and we open it from the bottom, and when it sits on the shelf, it looks like a full can. So what you see here is uh, part of my beer bottle collection. I can only get so many up in a small room like this. This bottle over here in particular is one of my favorites because it's really local. It's from Kitchener when it used to be called Berlin. They changed the name from, from Berlin to Kitchener in 1916. When builders built houses, even today they still do the same thing. They have a few beers, when the boss comes around, they have to hide them, they stick it in the wall or in the floor or wherever, and the beer's gone, right? Until somebody finds it when they do a renovation. So that's how this was found. Here on the south wall, we have the American cans, we have bottles, we have a front neck display. My favorite cans are the steel Cone top cans. Cone top cans can run anywhere from $75 to $1,000. And uh, of course, all the old steel flat tops. This is my favorite can, Dow Ale, 1953. These two are the oldest known Canadian paper labeled beer bottles, and they date back between 1861 and, and 1866. My whole O'Keefe collecting originated from my O'Keefe cooler here, which is a 1939 Frigidaire working cooler 
and it's our pride and joy of our collection as it keeps our beer cold. And over here is my wall of stubbies. These bottles came around about 1959, 1960, somewhere there. Carlings did put out these promo stubbies. It says, get set for a happening, and it's got that whole psychedelic feel with the colors and the font and all that. And this is my bar. Here I've got some serving trays, I have some tip trays, I've got clocks, I've got on-draft signs. I have all my favorite cans. We serve from this bar hourly, care for a pint. Even when I was a child, I collected stuff out of nature. I had bird egg collection, I had insect collection, I had bottle cap collection. I actually still have that. And look, <laughs> this is what happens, right? My wife and I, we have been collectors all our lives. Cheers! Cheers. The 20 bottles that I'm missing out of my collection are the 20 bottles I've never seen before. Most weeks, I come up with a new piece for my collection. Hey Dave, just keep in mind, when I see you in the ring at the beer market, I'm gonna kick you in the can. Pete, I'm gonna knock the suds right off your mug. This is the first time our contestants are getting to meet each other. Dave, Pete, Pete, Dave. How you doing? Dave? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Do you have anything to say to each other before we start? May the best can win. Yeah, I hope you did your homework, Dave. Well, I sampled a couple last night. Oh yeah? Right on. Well, let's Get see if that in. serves yeah. you well. <laughs> <laughs> Round one is a test of knowledge. I will ask each contestant nine questions related to the world of Bruriana. Whoever gets the most questions right wins. Round one. What is the difference between a stein and a mug? And I'm talking about the main structural difference between a stein and a mug. Pete, tell me your answer. My answer says either stein or steam has a lid. And Dave, what do you think it is? The height. And the answer is the stein has a lid. That is the main structural difference between the stein and the mug. Both the mugs and the steins have handles, but steins also have lids because they were introduced for sanitary reasons back in 15th century Germany. When All everything right. was really sanitary. Pete, one for you. Thank Dave, you. Zero. zero for you. What packaging innovation was introduced on Iron City beer cans in 1962? Hugely innovative. Changed the way we drink beer. Pete, you tell me your answer first. Well, I'm not a professional on the cans, but I say the pull tab. Huh. Can man, Dave? S snap top. So you both got this one right. The pull tab lid was invented back in 1962. People used to have to use a special opener called a church key to punch a hole in the can. That all changed when Ermel Fraze invented the pull tab lid in 1959. It came out in 62. Word has it he was frustrated after not having one of these uh, church keys one day, so he had to keep opening it on a bumper of a car, and he was really frustrated. He knew there had to be a better way, and the better way was the pull tab. So you both got this one right. All right. Pete, two for you. Dave, one for you. What animal is commonly used to advertise box-style beer? What is your answer, Pete? My answer is the goat. Hmm, Dave, what do you think it is? The goat. And the answer is the billy goat. Box style beer goes back hundreds of years, originally from Einbeck, Germany. It's a strong, dark lager, and Einbeck, Bach, Bach in German means billy goat, and that's why most beer producers who make box style beer put a billy goat on their label. You both got this one right. You are at three, Pete, and two for you, Dave. The Stubby is a short, fat beer bottle that was popular in Canada from the 60s until the early 80s. Which beer brand was the first to be sold in a long neck bottle in Canada? Got it? What is your answer? My answer is Molson Canadian. Can man, you think you got it? Miller. 
Miller. Well, the answer is Miller. Carling O'Keefe introduced the American beer Miller High Life to Canadian beer drinkers in 1983. And that was the beginning of the end for Stubbies in Canada. Very controversial. Other Canadian breweries started using long neck bottles in 1992. That's when the two big brewers, Molson and Labatt, adopted one standard size long neck bottle that is still used in beer bottles today. You've tied it up. All right. Three, three. What did American brewers have to add to their beer cans and bottle labels in the late 1980s? I know you guys collect mostly Canadiana stuff, but uh, let's see how you do on this question. Pete, what is your answer? I'm gonna say the French language to make them bilingual. Dave? Government warnings. Hmm, one of you got this question right. Mm -hmm. And the answer is government warnings. Ah. The US government mandated warning labels on alcoholic beverages in 1988. Warnings like how alcohol can cause birth defects if a pregnant woman drinks it, or how you shouldn't drive or operate machinery under the influence. Right. Dave, you got one up. You Ooh. are now four. Pete, you are three. Uh oh. What is the reason for the scarcity of North American beer advertising dating back to the 1920s and 30s? Pete, what's your you answer? I want my answer, do I you? I do, now, okay. please, now. Well, I'm gonna have to say prohibition. Dave, what's your answer? War efforts. The most direct answer is definitely prohibition. In the United States, alcohol was outlawed from 1920 to 1933. In Canada, it was a lot more complicated. Each province had their own rules, and that's why you are a little more likely to find Canadian Buriana from that time than you are to find American Buriana. I think they might have been bootlegging it as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got this one right, Pete. Dave, unfortunately, you didn't. You've now tied it up. You're 4-4 four, four now, three questions left. What was introduced in Richmond, Virginia in 1935 by the Kruger Brewing Company? Oh, so quick with your markers there. Let's see if you've got the answer. Pete? I'm gonna have to say beer in a can. Dave? The flat top beer can. You're both right. It is the beer can, the big, huge innovation. In January 1935, it'll forever go down in history as the month when Kruger Brewing Company first sold beer in cans, right. and the rest is beer can history. Okay. You're still tied. Still five, tied. Five, five. And my goodness. I knew more than I thought. And we have two questions left. Who invented the beer bottle cap? Hmm. The beer bottle cap. Oh. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm gonna have to go. He looks like he's uh, getting this question. Dave, you might as well write something down. Yeah. A wild guess is better than no guess at all. Pete, what's your answer? You would like to see, would you? I would really like okay. to see it. Pretty funny. I'm going to have to say late 1800s, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> I didn't Dave. have a clue either. <laughs> I, I guessed as much as Emmanuel Pastor. <laughs> well, it wasn't Jack the Ripper or Emmanuel Pastor. It was William Painter. He got the patent for the crown cap back in the 1890s. His design back then was very similar to the bottle caps that are around today. And it was called the crown cap because he said it gives a crowning and beautiful effect to the bottle. It was good looking, but also functional because it uh, prevented bottles from leaking, leaking liquid and carbonated gas. Right. You are still tied, five, five. Yes, and are. now we are at the very last question. If one of you gets this right and the other one does not, you win round one of Collector Showdown. Cool. Let's see Great. who that might be or might not be. How much beer does a growler hold? Mm. Pete? I'm gonna have to say more than 24 ounces. 
<laughs> Good one, Dave. My guess is one liter. And the answer is 64 ounces, a half a gallon, 1.9 liters. A growler is a half a gallon cap jug sold at some of today's brew pubs in the United States. Neither of you got this one right. Yep. You're tied five Didn't five. Get it wrong, though. Do you know? <laughs> That's not right. I'm sorry, I can't give that I one know, to you, Pete. Kidding. You know what that means? What's Over. that? Whoever wins the skills challenge of Collector Showdown, that's round two of Collector Showdown, wins the game and gets to claim the fabulous mystery prize. We're pumped. That's it, round two of Collector Showdown next. After test of knowledge in round one, Brewery Anna, Collectors Pete and Dave are tied. That means whoever wins round two, the test of skill gets to claim our fabulous mystery prize. And the challenge, it's all about beer, of course. There's a huge range of beer. How much of an art is there to beer tasting? Like any type of beverage tasting, whether it be scotch tasting, wine tasting, beer has a, a certain elemental artistry to it. It's not quite as snobby as wine in the sense <laughs> that it's a little bit more accessible, it's a little more commonplace. The beautiful thing about beer is that there's a style of flavor to suit everyone. With that in mind, now it's time to put our two collector's taste buds to the test in the next showdown challenge. It is time for the second showdown challenge, the skills challenge. You're both blindfolded, I'll tell you why in a minute. You <laughs> just remember, you tied in round one, the test of knowledge. So this is the skills challenge. This is what it all comes down to. Whoever wins this, wins Collector Showdown and gets to claim the fabulous mystery prize. If by chance you tie again, then we are gonna go to a sudden death showdown tiebreaker and determine the winner once and for all. You have five beers in front of you and no, this is not a chugging competition. One is a lager, one is a pilsner, a cream ale, a stout, and a Hefeweizen, which is otherwise known as a wheat beer. You both have the exact same beers in front of you, but they are in a different order. And we blindfolded you because we know that if you can see the color of the beer, that, um, that might give it away. So this is going to rely solely on your ability to taste and smell and determine which is which. Dave, how do you feel about your ability to pick out which is which here? Well, I think I should be able to pick out 60%. Yeah? What yeah. about you, Pete? I guess we'll find out once we start. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> this is how the game's gonna work. Starting at your left, you may have one sip of each beer in succession. And in case your hand can't find it, I will bring your hand over to the first one. Then you will be able to get a second sip of each one but you will only get two sips of each beer. And you can tell me at any time which one you think is which, but once you make that decision, there's no going back. The choice is final. Pete, you're gonna go first. Okay. And then when you're done, it's gonna be Dave's turn. And whoever gets the most right wins this round and possibly collector showdown. You have 90 seconds for this task. Pete, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I will bring your hand over to the first selection. Go. And you can tell me at any time which one you think is which, but as soon as you make your choice, you've made your choice. Wow. One more round, or do you want to make a selection yet? No, I'm gonna try the first one again. All right, that's number one. 60 seconds are up, you have 30 seconds. I think that was the lead beer. Is that your final answer? Yes, that's your lager. Hmm. Really stuck on that one and this one. Oh, that's the fifth one. Let's oh, go in order. One? Right there. Third one. You are coming up to one minute and 30 seconds. Which is 90 seconds. Okay. That's it. You have to choose the last three. I think three. the third one was the stout, then the cream ale, if I didn't say that already, and the wheat beer. 
And the wheat beer you've already said. I did? Yes, Which you one did. did I leave out? The Pilsner. So that's oh, what that be the is. Pilsner. <laughs> All right, Dave. That's hard to do. It is a tough one to do. Yeah, it is. Are you set? Too many flavors all at once. All right, go. That's the first one. This is a tough one to do blindfold today. Okay, this is the first one? Yes, it is. That's a wheat. All right. Second one. Pilsner. Third Stout. one. Stout. Stout. You have 15 seconds left. What's my other choices? Lager and cream ale. Lager and cream ale. And time's cream up. Cream lager. my guess. It's your guess. All right. I bet you guys want to take your blindfolds off, don't you? I don't know. Well, yeah, I guess. Room's not spinning yet. How do you think you did? Dave? I'm hoping 60%. Hoping 60%? What yeah. about you, Pete? I don't have a clue. Don't have a clue? No. Now it's time to take off your blindfolds and see how you both did. <laughs> oh. I don't even remember what I said. Pete. Yes. This is lager. You yes. said wheat beer. Duh. This is cream ale. I didn't say that. You said lager. I said lager. This is Pilsner. You said stout. stout. This is stout. You're right. Cream ale is right. what you said. Mm -hmm. And this so is the wheat wrong. beer and Pilsner. Right. You got them all wrong. <laughs> you got them all wrong. This is where color really would have come in handy. Dave, yeah. let's see how you did. This is the cream ale. I said wheat. You said wheat. This is Pilsner. You said Pilsner. That means you won. He wins. Collector Showdown. Right. You won round two, the Skills Challenge. You are the winner right. of Collector Showdown. It's time for you to find out what you won. Are you uh, getting excited? Yes, ma'am. The drum roll. Ready, ready to rock. Well, we are going to find out in just a moment. Okay. Pete, what happened? You didn't get any of those right. <laughs> I think if I had a little more time, if I wasn't so pressured to do as many in such a short time, it might have been easier and cleanse the palate, all that thing, you know. Well, and, but we that's didn't, okay. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Well, you know what? We're going to make that even better. How's that? Well, had we have gone to the sudden death showdown tiebreaker. Well, I was wondering you, about that too. Well, you have to wonder no longer. You would have had to identify beers of the world. There are wow. beers in here from India, Slovenia, Belgium, and these are for you. Wow, thank these you These are for very you. Much. A little That's take cool. home present. Mm -hmm. Go home, enjoy your beers. Make sure you pay attention to which one's a Pilsner, which one's a Stout and Lager. I will, because the next time I'm blindfolded drinking, <laughs> you know. You will need I'm to I'm gonna know. know what I'm drinking, right? That's yeah. good, that's good. It's a good skill, good skill to have. Exactly. All right, well, thanks a lot. And thank you. Dave, come on in. You won Collector Showdown, Excellent. congratulations. Excellent. You had a good time? Yes, thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, now it's time to find out every, about everything that you won here. I'm gonna start off with Sleeman's. So Sleeman's is uh, Canada's third largest brewery, founded in 1834, and there are tons of great things here. The uh, sweatshirt, the mm -hmm. pitcher over there, the metal sign, there's a wooden case there for your beer, beer yeah. glasses, and that's whistle. just the beginning of it. Steam whistle, you have your whistle, it's a local favorite uh, with heritage style packaging, and you've got a hat, and there's a t-shirt in here somewhere, bottle openers, and then the best of the whole Steam Whistle prize package is a tour of the brewery complete with beer tasting for you and nine of your friends and you don't have to wear a blindfold. 
Excellent. <laughs> right on. Excellent. There is the Cool Beer Brewing Company. That's another local brewery specializing in lagers and hemp beer. You have two classic taps here. These are no longer in circulation, so they are collector's items. And then there's a lot more collectibles. In this binder, there are a bunch of collectible labels. You see that Creamore Springs label? Yeah, yeah. You've probably never seen that before. No. That never made it to store shelves. Very few of them are around. And lastly, but definitely not the least, is this mystery prize underneath this white mm. curtain of sorts. This is a Danby Keg beer fridge, holds a 60 liter keg, Excellent. valued at over $700. I hear that you Excellent. have a home bar and you like to entertain. Yes, absolutely. That will just now yeah. you get to take a look. Isn't that awesome? That is excellent. 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 We entertain all the time, and that will just be the the king of the crop. Right on. Uh, yeah. So what do you think of this whole uh, prize package here? Very worthwhile. Thanks. And the collectible all labels. The labels. Oh. You're not gonna see those anywhere else. No. Come to Goodwood and see it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. If only we had a beer to do a proper cheers. <laughs> we'll see you next time when two more collectors show down for the experience of a lifetime. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.